Okay, we are welcome. I'd like to uh, welcome you back to our in-person regular work session for uh, June 7th, 2021. Everyone, nice to see everyone back. You know, we got to see each other through Zoom, but it's not quite as realistic as this. So, hope everyone's doing well. Thank you all for joining us, and uh, let's uh, get moving. So, uh, Ms. Burns, you can call the roll, please. Sure. Mayor Lowry. Here. <coughs> Councilman Grimm. Get here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Nowakowski. Here. Councilman Cobb. Here. Councilman Roadwold. Here. Vice Mayor Cook. Here. Seven members present. Thank you, ma'am. And tonight's invocation will be done by Councilman Cobb. Dear Heavenly Father, help us and give us the strength to do what's best for our citizens and watch over what's done for the citizens. Also watch our first responders, our fire and EMS, our deputy sheriffs, our military. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the best one in over a year. Yeah, oh, that was the best one in a long time. Second guessing you. Right. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you. So moving on. Uh, actually, on the minutes, non communications tonight. Uh, we have Derek Lavoy, excuse me, Lavoyevich Van Gore from the Clark County Grants. Uh, yeah, so everyone, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, we've been uh, brought up to council, I think at the last meeting about that CDB, uh, CDBG CARES Act funds and some potential projects for the city. Um, so Dirk needed to do a pre-application pretty quick, so I did consult with the mayor and vice mayor on that pre-application. Uh, so he is here to talk to council a little bit more about what we can and cannot do with this grant, uh, and then uh, any questions that council may have. Um, so, Dirk, you want to go ahead and take that podium? You're more than welcome to. Um, I have reached out to a skate park designer out of Los Angeles because a lot of them seem to be out west. So, I did submit him some information. Uh, but it would be ultimately a council decision how you guys want to move forward with this, whether it be a shelter house or any other project that may qualify under it here. Uh, but we do have a pre application in place. So, without further ado, I will let Dirk take it over. And, and council, this is your opportunity to just have open and honest communication with our guests today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, did you want to lead off with anything? Or? Sure. Uh, just call me Dirk. Forget the last name. It's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> but if you put the Dirk and the Van Gorp together, that's Dutch farm country in northern Iowa. Okay. So that's where I'm from. Uh, so uh, up there they have a sign outside of town that says, if you ain't Dutch, you ain't much. <laughs> <laughs> I've always tried to figure out whether they're joking or not. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate. Um, Yes, I'm the community. Uh, I'm the grants uh, coordinator for Clark County Community Development. Uh, been working closely with uh, Randy and, and his team on a number of different things. And just uh, recently, probably I don't know about a month or so ago, uh, we got notice that there was still some funding left from the original CARES Act that was allocated to Ohio. Um, so if we remember during the COVID-19 crisis, the CARES Act is the one that dates back to April or so of 2020, uh, completely separate from the new American Recovery Act funding and stuff like that. Well, it took the state about some cities like Springfield get it directly. You know, they're called an entitlement city. The county works with the state as, as what we call an allocation county. And of course, New Carlisle is one of the cities in the county that we work with closely. So we got notice that they still had funding available past the first grant that we had submitted and received. And some of you may have read about some of the programs that we're supporting. Uh, Rocking Horse Public Health, um, Second Harvest Food Bank, uh, also a couple of uh, agencies that deal with domestic and sexual violence in the county uh, are the recipients are the county is responsible but there are implementing partners sub-recipients then the state said well listen 
uh, Clark County, if you're interested in submitting a second application, we still have uh, money available. And at about that same time, the federal government loosened some of their formerly quite rigid guidelines uh, and made it a bit more flexible. You can't do everything with it, but they opened up some other possibilities with what they called somehow tied to COVID-19 pandemic, okay? And one of those was the creation of new social spaces or recreational um, facilities in cities like New Carlisle that meet the criteria for HUD block grant funding. And I think most of you in New Carlisle probably know that you are eligible as an overall city. Um, and then, of course, there's neighborhoods within the city that are also eligible. So I uh, immediately thought of New Carlisle because, you know, I grew up in towns about this size uh, out in the Midwest. And I knew you had some parks and uh, some of the ideas that were presented in an outline by HUD were uh, things like uh, creation of facilities for greater social distancing, for uh, recreation that was, um, you know, too crowded to be safe during times of COVID uh, or anything similar to COVID. So that's uh, what I, I brought to, uh, to Randy and uh, he brought to you and uh, ideas, I guess, became a skate park and possibly a few other things, but I'll, I'll let you speak to those. And on the basis of that, we submitted basically a very general, <laughs> and when I mean general, the first step is what the state calls a pre-application. Uh, and New Carlisle was one of three that were presented. The other two, if you're curious, are United Senior Citizens and also um, an agency that does housing. You may know of them, Neighborhood Housing Agent uh, Partnership in Springfield. And those were for HVAC, uh, air filtration systems, in facilities that the public has to access for training and other purposes. Uh, so. What is not allowed, I would just, uh, I have to caution everybody because I get a lot of requests from across the county, is anything that is considered as the normal conduct of government is not allowed under community block grant funding. So it has to bring a benefit to uh, a community block grant eligible neighborhood or city, in this case, New Carlisle, the city is eligible under HUD guidelines. So. Uh, Leave it at that, and you can ask me any questions. They have accepted the pre-application, uh, and they are ready to open a full application for the three projects that we submitted pre-applications on. It's competitive funding. I cannot 100% guarantee you. Um, <laughs> the pre-application was for 400,000, uh, and they accepted that as a fairly accurate estimate if it goes a little above a little below the state's not going to you know penalize us for that in the full application uh, full application is a bit complicated but i'm sure that i can work with randy and his team and uh, fulfill everything we have been quite successful in clark county over the past year and a half or so uh, gaining uh, some new grants some additional grants I feel positive about this, but I would caution that it is competitive, okay? Uh, for about 45 counties in the state. Okay, I have a couple. Um, so this, it can be broken down into multiple projects within that spending amount, per se. Yes, it can. So you can, you know, and I'm saying, for example, addition to shelter house, uh, skate park addition, uh, a shelter at the pool or whatever it may be. It can be broken Correct. Up. Okay. Um, and, and I think one of the questions that come up to Mr. Bridge in one of our Zoom meetings or over the phone, I can't remember which way it was, but, you know, when I think about a grant, you know, obviously it would be smart, in my opinion, to spend on something that is really big that would be hard for us to find. So, you know, we talked about additions to the shelter house with the kitchenette, which would be great. I think a lot of people can utilize that, but that's not a real hefty price tag. It's something we can do you know, on our own without without uh, any help, I think, for, for the most part. But, you know, my initial thought was the, the pool itself. Not I'm not talking about the structure, but the inner pool. We said that after talking with you, the pools probably wouldn't fall into that. 
No, the pool is not going to fall into that category. Yeah, I think there's probably a lot of communities that wish that it did, but then HUD would end up funding a lot of public pools. Right, <laughs> you know, well, yeah. And fair yeah. too. So, but what about like smaller buildings with the pool, like a shelter? Yes, absolutely. A shelter, uh, a new shelter house, an improvement to a shelter house, that is definitely, yeah, to create additional space okay. and safety. Yeah. Okay, and you mentioned three, and I, I can't remember if I was overlooking something or I missed it. Your initial discussion was skate park addition here or a second shelter. What was the third? Mm, I think there was only two. Could be something okay. as simple as additional seating. You know, picnic tables, oh, benches, okay. whatever. I just must have missed what you yeah. said. I thought there was three that we had laid out too. Yeah. So, okay. That's my first few questions. Mr. Weissmeyer. Dirk, would this possibly encompass the widening of the road and the parking lot out here also? Not this particular grant, no. They're not doing any type of street or road improvements under this type of grant. Uh, there, there may be other grants coming online that, that deal more with infrastructure, and that's something that you might be able to propose under a future infrastructure grant. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Krim. Um, so how does this work? Do, do they decide whether or not we get it based on what you've done, and then we decide what we're going to do with it, or the other way around? No. Have to decide before we make the full application of which specific projects you're interested in. And then I have to provide the full details and a cost estimate um, for each of those projects. So if, for example, there were two, something connected with the shelter house and then your skate park, those would be the two projects um, for, for New Carlisle. And I have to have full details and information on them to be able to submit the full application. Let me get the page. Um, this is probably a stupid question, but what is LMI? LMI is the Housing Urban Development uh, Department uh, terminology for low and moderate income. Okay, so all community development block grants have to qualify on low moderate income, and the overall community of New Carlisle as a whole, city of New Carlisle, qualifies as LMI city. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Um, one question in regards to the skate park. Would, would that grant cover the cost of moving the skate park as well or just enhancing the current park? Because we've had discussions of moving the park itself. I would more, say that, more location. I mean, as long as it doesn't involve the purchase of land, yeah. If it's on land that the city owns, yep. I don't think it would be relevant where you improved or built a better skate park. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, my two cents on it, uh, I, I like some of the ideas. I mean, I, I think throwing a large chunk of the skate park, I mean, I'm all for the skate park because it's, it's got a little bit busier down there. There's some equipment, you know. That equipment has been there since Bob Bennett was a city manager, so I think it's it's, it's, it's served its purpose. Price. I mean, it could use some fixing. Uh, it would be nice to upgrade it. Uh, I don't know if you know spending the full amount on the skate park that would be a stretch for me. I'd like to dice it up a little myself. Um, you know, maybe see what we can do with the skate park to make it better. Um, I would love to see an addition onto this, or or whatever would be the best way to do it. Uh, I know a lot of people that rent the shelter house out here for like Thanksgiving and things and birthdays. You know, we, we can't provide a refrigerator to keep uh, cake and ice cream cold, so that would be a really good, you know, Thanksgiving, they, you know, want to be able to keep something warm, a microwave, something, something just a real basic kitchenette added on. And I think that last time we discussed that, Mr. Kitko, he had some rough estimates, and it was in the, it was in the ballpark, I think, of like 50000 just to add on to this area here, and then, you know, I'm sure a few grand to, to you know, for some basic appliances and things like that. So, um, we got low to the addition here. Put some towards the skate park, and then if uh, there was anything left over, whatever council thought is the there's the shelter at the back end of the pool, and it's getting pretty rickety and dry rot and starting to come down. And then there's a section where you could probably add another, which would increase pool revenue, where they could book more parks. But that's that's my two cents. Those are my two 
those three areas? Well, whatever projects uh, the city council, it is council. Yes. But, yeah, city council comes up with. Um, I double check. I don't hear anything that I don't think the state would accept on the basis of the pre-application, but I double check. Like I'd say, okay, shelter house. We mentioned shelter house would actually be a addition to an existing shelter house that would also encompass a food preparation area and just make sure that that that's okay, okay. you know, with them. Okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. Grant. Do we have a deadline on when we have to have all this together? Well, again, as soon as possible. I have to submit all three pre-applications that have been approved within the same full application. I can't submit them separately. So one will hold up the others. <laughs> um, I'll be honest with you, yours are probably, you know, the, the more complicated and much more expensive than the other two. Um, and it is competitive funding until funds are exhausted. Now, I know that the state, it's probably gonna take them a little while longer to award out the rest of these funds, but I can't be sure. You know, they're not going to tell me. So the, the quicker, the better, the sooner, the better. Uh, not that I don't have anything else going on, but I'm committed to trying to get these new projects approved, just like the three quarters of a million was approved for the other four agencies earlier, because I think there's just some great opportunities for Clark County and within Clark County, specifically for the city of New Carlisle, with some funding that appears to be increasing and may continue to increase for community development in the future. And we need to get moving. Right. Well, that's what was my next question. I don't know who wants to answer it. So let's, you know, depending on what council wants to do, you know, whether it's A, B, and C project or if it's all on one project A, we need, as a city, do we need to get the total cost on our own to say, you know, add this on to the shelter house and then get that number to him or, you know, all three projects or however it was diced up? Is that? What I, what I really need to happen is you guys need to decide how you want to use the grant. So therefore, we can run with it. So we need if to, that could be decided today, that would be great. You need to prioritize. Yes, you do, because we, I have to, like I said, I've already started working with the skate park. He wanted pictures and stuff like that. Um, the shelter house, do you do an addition here, or do you do a separate one? You know, if you're going to have a, a grant that will pay for a whole brand new one that can have a kitchenette in it, now you have two revenue streams going on. Uh, skate park does need attention. However you guys move forward with the pool is up to you guys. Um, but I don't, we would have to expand the current shelter at the pool for that to even qualify. So we're not, we just can't use money to renovate. It has to be able to expand. <clears throat> if you justified it as being currently unusable. It's not unusable. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just, you know, I'm saying what if. <laughs> pool, we're going to put in probably upwards of 100000 of the next year to put that bladder in. Yeah. There's a lot of money that's going into that pool these past couple of years that maybe the pool needs to have it sit out this round. I mean, we've done a lot of improvements at that pool, and I fortunately don't think that this particular grant money is going to be able to go into the pool because you're not expanding it, you're not enlarging it. It's already utilized, what Ben Dirk said. Um, but ultimately, that's up to council, but the council needs to sit down and talk about the future of that pool at some point in time. Said it, just put money into it, put money into it. You know, what is council's long term decision on that pool? If it is to keep it open for probably 10 years or not put the liner in and close it next year, or however you guys choose to do it moving forward, we gotta watch how much we're putting in that pool without knowing the future of it. Um, so, skate park, shelter house, I think that's where you guys should focus your attention on too, namely because of timing. And then, two, like I said, how can we expand that shelter back in that pool to make it worth? I'm having a couple of Oh, here. gotcha. Sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll the next one over, Chief. The electronic one. So just push it down a couple of degrees. There you go. Thank you, sir. It'll... Oh, oh, it needs to go sorry. up. Yeah. Up. Yeah. It needs to go up. I have that same thermostat in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Sorry, I just wanted everybody to be over here. I'm sorry. I didn't oh, no, no, that, that's it. So I'm just like, we we got to find ways that's going to be justifiable to spend that pool. 
I mean, I don't know how we're going to expand it. I don't know how you're going to do all that kind of stuff. But I mean, from a, the administrator, it's council needs at some point in time to sit down and have a heart to heart again about that pool, about where is it going to be in two, three, five years, especially if you go ahead and put that bladder in. If you don't do the bladder, where is that going to put the pool? If you do it ahead and go with the bladder next year, how's that going to impact the pool? Uh, but, sir. About the lock panel. A local resident has been demolishing a building and discovered that it's a log cabin from back when my grandkids think I was born um, in the 1800s. We would like to move that here. Would that be covered? I don't believe that that would qualify under this, this guideline. No, they're definitely looking to create additional space, you know, or opportunity for safe outdoor you know, type of exercise and recreation is what they're trying. And I think I read about the cabin that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm personally, I've spent 25 years in construction, and it's fascinating to me, you know, the, uh, the old cabins, and I've been part of restorations on, on some many years ago, but uh, not, not under this grant. But I don't know, possibly Ohio Historic Preservation Office? I, mean, I, I don't know. But it might be something to look into. Yeah. What? Oh, I have historic preservation. Uh, I, council has to motion me as a whole. I can't do it off one, but the council would like me to look into that. I would move that we ask Mr. Bridge to check. Oh, that's right. This is the first council. Yeah. Work session. I made a note. Good, Mr. Bridge. I'm good. Okay. You want else? All right. As far as the pool, so the, the back show. Oh, I'm sorry. No, Mr. Cobb, you're right. Go ahead. Can that money be also used to, when we've got to get Wi-Fi to get intercom in here and that? Yeah, it's not going to qualify the expense, but we're working on American Rescue Plan funds for that. All right. I just wanted to ask. And maybe we look at the shelter house for the pool for that funding money opposed to this. Because I think it's going to be a long stretch to get this approved through the state yeah. at the pool. Uh, so I'm not trying to be negative against the pool. It's just we got to put our money where it's going to be best used for this particular grant funding opportunity. This, this kind of money doesn't come around very often. Um, like I said, we can update, change up boards with the shelter house of the pool on our own funds. This is, this is you know, money we need to really take advantage of that's free and, like I said, doesn't come around very often. If you look at, you know, especially the additional shelter house, I'm, I'm suggesting things that's going to bring revenue to the city. You know, minus the skate park because we don't charge a fee to get in. But we can assume that if we have up, up, uh, increased attendance to our skate park, that may lead into increased attendance at the pool. But I'm trying to get in things with this grant money that's going to bring us revenue opposed to cost us money, if that makes sense. So that's why I originally suggested the shoulder house, because we do. We, this shoulder house is booked on the weekends nonstop. I mean, it is booked. We turn people away. Well, and that's, that was going to be my next point. If we can't use it to, to say, rehab the back shelter house at the pool, which it is, it's not unusable by any means, but it's, it's yeah. getting to the sure. point where it needs some serious repair. But the part where the old racquetball court was, and the four square balls, and it's just some straight concrete that really doesn't get used. You could erect a new one there to expand space, thus generate more revenue for the pool, which we all know need, because that's usually the complaint, that it doesn't generate enough revenue. Because with this current shelter house at the back there, you can only put Especially in our parties, when you do an hour, in our parties at the pool, you know, you've got to leave some open for your, your daily gate customers, but then they block off sections for private parties during an hour. So you have a whole other building with picnic tables, you can then book more in hours parties, giving you more revenue, which is the same concept as what we're doing with this. No, a little different. Pools, three months, the shelter house. Is right, but it's still a revenue generator. Yes, no, I agree. I agree. Mr. Graham. $400,000. We can make some good improvements to the skate park and build an awful darn nice shelter house. Oh, I agree. Now the kitchen. Three bedrooms, gazebo, pool. <laughs> they didn't say three bedrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow Springs is rebuilt in their skate park. And Dirk, correct me. I'm going off memory on the email. I think theirs was around 5,000 square feet. Yeah, because they don't have any space in Yellow Springs, so it was only about 5,000. Yeah, so our current one's about 5,000 square feet, too. Um, but they've, they've got nice, um, very nice cement 
uh, I don't know what they're called, tricks? What are they? What are they're they? all concrete ramps. Ramps, and ramps. Yeah, 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 stuff like that. Like it, it, it's Rails. nice. I mean, it, it, it is yeah. nice. Yeah, it is. And have you reached out to Yellow Springs about what that cost them? Uh, it was around, um, uh, theirs was, I'm going off memory here, 250 to 300. Because it was 45, 45, it's 45. About 45. 45 to 60 dollars per, per square per, foot for a skate park. Yeah. yeah. How big, I know it was in here, how big did you guesstimate ours was? Then? About 5,000. Was it 5,000? I, I guessed off of the county GIS system mm -hmm. that it looks to be about 5,000 square feet. Okay. Now, you, you may want to expand that. Yeah, well, when <laughs> you I, know, when if, I did. When if I you have a demand for it. Yeah. We passed it. If, you, if you're walking up to this gate park, if you yeah. look to the right of it, there's a whole patch of land that we can actually expand onto. So we will never be able to get a skate park out of our own funds. So that's going to take some time to do. You know, um, the pool, we have been, April's done a fantastic job, Mike's done a fantastic That pool's got a lot of improvements the past two, three years. And it's going to get another major one next year with the bladder. You know, so when you look at this, of course, we're starting to think about the pool, but it's not logical to do anything with the pool because, like I said, we can have something here, take our existing skate park, which is heavily used, and get rid of the metal and get rid of, it's just nasty down here. I was down here today. And then get a second shelter house, you know, and that is that revenue stream is going to be huge because now that one over there has a kitchenette. You can charge a little bit more. We may have to reduce this one a little bit, you know, but on the weekends, both of those more than likely will be filled up. Okay, so Madison Street School will be down this summer, right? Yeah, they'll be starting out here soon, very soon. And we still own the land. Why not move the skate park and build a shelter house there? Then you would need an extra park, um, but that really is something I would recommend council leave there for a couple of years to see if we can get some of the developer to come and put some Bean houses on. Mm -hmm. The skate park's also a little, it's kind of loud, you know what I mean? Well, I don't know how loud, oh, yeah, but concrete, it might be Right, that's what I said, it might be quieter if it was concrete, because with mm -hmm. the metal, it's, you almost mistake it as thunder sometimes when you're down there, but yeah, if it's concrete, that might not be the case. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you this, and I just thought it, it's like, I know we've always talked about moving that skate park, but say we left it where it's at. And if eight people has a private party, is that something that we can close off and include access to the skate park as part of the private, as part of the cost for the private party of the pool? I don't know. I don't know if people try to go over there a lot. I don't know what to do. They go back and forth. They go back and forth. So would that be an enticing thing to upgrade the skate park? And let's say you rent out the, park, the pool for a private party, that you get access to that solely as well. I don't know. I'm just thinking. Your cost factor is always going to go up any time you have to start providing, you know, toilets and things like that in a completely new location. I mean, the advantage of adding on to some place where there are certain parking, you know, access, um, mm -hmm. toilet facilities, things like that. And I think that $45 per square foot probably assumed that it was on bare ground, yeah. you know, so you can bring it down below that. You would know. they like to see if safe safe council wanted to do a shelter house and a skate park would they make us do restrooms outside that mm -hmm. skate park uh no uh, i mean i assume that at this current skate park there's something available someplace nothing is it open all the time Does, as far as the land down there, if you're looking at the skate park, like if you're on the road looking at the skate park and there's the trees to the right, is this, I'm assuming the city owns yeah, going do. into that. Oh, we go clear into the woods. That's I mean, how I looked at that this morning. Because that's that was going to be my next question. If we expand the skate park, it's obviously going to take up land, which is work. You know, there's already short on parking down there in here. When you get a full skate park and in the summer a full house with swimmers at the same time, so we have room to make more parking. Well, let me ask you this, because I was down there, like, down there today, one thing I was thinking, that basketball court, is that a full-length court? Yeah. That's pretty big. Because what they could do is come across and expand the skate park and cut that basketball court in half and just leave a half-court basketball. I don't see people running up and down playing full-court press there. You know, can they bring it over to the left towards the pool? And then, you know, like I said, cut that basketball. Right. But I'm an engineer, I'm no architect. Right. And that. then be able to have but access. But the thing about it is, is there's space to work with down there. Mm -hmm. There is. Because parking is especially on busy days. 
Any other questions for Dirk? I, I don't have anything further for Dirk. Would, would be apropos to possibly schedule a work session within the next week or so, so that we can hash this thing out. You're wanting probably some direction sooner than that, correct? Yeah, we gotta get the ball rolling on this because it's first come, first serve. And it's gonna take a week or two to get the formal as to the back from uh, Spoon, yeah. Ranch, who's gonna be dealing with out in LA. Yeah, who, whoever you decide to get a, an estimate mm -hmm. from, uh, it has to be a formal professional estimate and it has to follow Randy knows the guidelines with this team, you know, the uh, CDBG estimate guidelines in terms of labor cost and things like that. Like all community block grant projects like the Madison Street School or Fenwick Drive or whatever, it's a project that the state requires a county contract on behalf of the city of New Carlisle. So, but it's, on the other hand, the partner's responsibility to come up with the cost factor, okay? And then, based on that, it, it goes out to bid, you know, when the project is actually done. So that's what I was kind of asking earlier. I probably didn't care. So whatever we decide, ABC or just A or whatever it may be, we got to get a cost to submit to them is what it would cost them. Right. Yeah, formal okay. estimate. Yeah. And once that formal estimate is included in the application, we have to stay with it. Do we want to, if, if we're saying that uh, the sooner the better, do you want to schedule a work session for later this week? Do we need a, a whole meeting on it? This council just, council, is, is everyone just doesn't know how they're going to move well, forward, or is that something we can talk, talk about after in the regular meeting if we have time, or? Well, that's what I was thinking, since, you know, we've got the basis information, we've heard some ideas of projects, we can let it stew up until we get into the regular meeting. And if we feel we need another day or two, then we can we can make a motion to do a meeting in the regular session or so. Yeah, except well, I'll, if we do it one this week, probably like Thursday. Sooner the better would be best. Yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking Thursday evening for a work session inviting Mr. Kitko, and uh, you, because I think you're going to have to have him available in order to find out what your limitations are as far as. We don't need Mr. Kitko. We okay. something we can just we can we can do. Um, it, I would prefer to you know, not have a, another evening meeting, but if that's how council wants to do it, we can. I just, I don't know how much time we're going to put into the discussion. No, I mean, because ultimately, I mean, the skate park's going to cost three to 350000 So. Well, I don't know how much bigger you make it. You I mean, if it's 7,000 square five, feet. Right, 5,000 square foot's a brown ballpark, 200000 So if you just go to, yeah, 750000 you're going to say Yeah. Yeah. So. And then. You know, so improvements to the shelter house, I would earmark for the rest well, remaining, whether it's an addition or just add a kitchenette, well, some upgrades. Oh, yeah, definitely, for sure. People have been asking for it for years. Yep. You're right, you're right. Hey, sorry to interrupt. No, Emily really brought up a good point. Um, if we do have a special meeting, if council wants to do that way, Paper. it's going to take, it'll probably be in the next week. Yeah, so, so the earliest I think it ad can run is Thursday. That is if. Tell you what. Well, we can always, we can always, once we get to the regular session, we can always go into, I mean, we're into uh, down to other business. We can discuss it all night long on your other business. So in the city management board, once we get to it, I'm, I'm going to start requesting special meetings to talk about the American Rescue Plan. It was for after the 21st um, to give us a little bit more time because we haven't got the money yet. Um, I'm saying push come to show, we can do it Monday evening, but. Well, let's see what happens in the regular session because that's what we're going to have to make a motion for the meeting yeah, anyway when we do it. So, yeah. let everybody let all the information we've just got spend for a little bit. So, all right. Anything else for Dirk? So, if they wanted to do like a separate shelter out at the pool, like take leave the existing one we have there now, right. and then build a new one to sure. expand that, that's fine. You're, that's you, fine. That, that's fine. Yeah, you're expanding okay. space by adding another shelter house. But don't touch the current one we have. And let's expand on to that. You could add on to it, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if that's your that's your decision, <laughs> it doesn't have to be freestanding. You're adding, you're creating additional space. Gotcha. Yeah. Anything else, Mr. Birch? No, nope, I just wanted to clarify that so we can have all. How the big is the racquetball court? Do you remember? Did you guys measure it? Well, no. I mean, I, no. I don't know how big it is. I mean, you got the, you got the four square courts, and mm -hmm. they're using the racquetball courts. Yeah. And then there's some space, I think, behind that. So. Okay. 
Anyone else for our guest? Thank you very much. We really appreciate the uh, time. Thank you. The okay. information very uh, informative. Thank you. You folks will see me around New Carlisle quite a bit in the coming right. weeks, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, have a good day, bud. Thank you. You good to move forward, Mr. Bridge? Yeah, I am. Thank you. Sorry. Citizen of the Year discussion. I think Mr. Vice Mayor brought that, brought that up. This has been something that has been talked about a while back, I think a year or two years ago. There was also a, I guess the word is an email from a young lady that recommended three ladies. In researching what other cities are doing, they are basically taking from the citizens a recommendation for Citizen of the Year and then making a choice and then an award somewhere during the year. Peggy and I have been back and forth on this a little bit. I don't know whether we want to go ahead and possibly recognize those three ladies that have already basically, and I will say, been nominated, and then go on to a further nomination for later in the year or hold off until the following year for any further nomination, which will be on the council. Any discussion on this? I think we should go ahead and recognize the three and then town hall is usually first of the year so we can take nominations for that. Okay. Well, we can admit that South Council, if they will count most of the then we'll just do a motion and regular session to do so. But the, yeah, I like that idea. I don't know if you brought it up last, but you know, we do want to do our town hall. Maybe I don't know if there was someone said that we could do it through the city's Facebook page or through the website. People could submit. I want to submit. You know, John Smith because he's done these good deeds, and it just compiles a little list, and we print it out towards the end of the year and send it out and announce it at the uh, town hall or whatever it may be. So, but yeah, I like that. So. I just think that the the three ladies that were mentioned need to be recognized. They've done a lot for the city through the pandemic. So. Agreed. All right. Well, it sounds like we kind of got anything else on that, Mr. Investor. That's all I've got on that. If you want me to go on to the veterans' banners. Kind of interrupt. Sorry, he threw me off. What was the final outcome of the citizen of the year? We'll bring it back up. Oh, okay. Sounds like they're, they're going to move forward with the suggestion of the three ladies for the time being. Gotcha. All right. Sounds good. Sorry. Okay. Right. okay. The veterans banners, primarily this was discussed a couple of years ago, brought up by Mr. Shammy. I think it's a good idea. I've been in contact with uh, Christy Smith at Sign Smith. Studio and 10. She, Studio I'm sorry. Studio 10. 10. Studio 10. Excuse me. <laughs> I don't catch up quick with her. <laughs> but she has done a preliminary uh, uh, banner. And as, as you can see, this is basically a two-sided banner. The approximate cost is going to be about $45 each. She recommended that if we choose to do this, that we possibly could put together a form. The form would be uh, filled out by the person wishing to purchase the banner. A digital photograph would have to be accompanying this along with the payment direct to Studio 10. And I have no problem. I don't know how many people we might be interested, but I already know of three banners that have been told to me that they will purchase. So I, I'm not sure how many we would have room for in the downtown section. Are we looking at the possibility of 20, 25, 50? 
Is that where council wants them? No. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, because we got the flower pots coming in downtown. Um, flag season is going to impact some of that, you know, so, but, I mean, is this something you guys want spaced out? Do them all in one, one area? I mean, we got, like, I think 90-something poles up and down the street. Also, I think, mm -hmm. like, the uh, farmer's market uses some of them, yeah, too. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Well, again, this is not going to be almost September. I think your farmer's market's going to be pretty much over with. At that point, uh, I just think it's a, a valuable situation to recognize our veterans, uh, the time that they serve. We used to have a veterans park up in front of the old city building mm -hmm. at one point. I don't know what happened with that situation. But uh, I think this is a valuable opportunity and we need to go forward with it. Yeah, no, it's, and you see a lot of the other towns are going to, mm -hmm. towns are, well, really all size towns, but they, they look really nice. So. They look really nice. What would be, I mean, do you think the easiest way would be is to, can we, Mr. Bridge, would it be possible to, if council or, or whatever, it'd probably be easiest to work with Kristen on this, if she were going to do the banners, if she could come up with a form of the information she would need, obviously, you know, the picture, the name, and all the information. If she came up with a form, could it be left up at the city building, one of the pockets, you know, that way? You know, we can put out there, hey, if you would like one of these banners, feel free to stop by the city building, pick up a form, we fill it out, and, she, and then that, you know, customer takes it to the Studio 10, and it's pretty well, much well, not not, well, we're not putting the form on our uh, website. Yeah, we you can do a PDF on the website, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's easy. And she did a good job with these, and it took me a minute to look at it, so I don't know who notices, but I guess there's an option there to put metals if they want a metal, too. Oh, yeah. You see the purple heart? Yeah. Kind of blended in with me, but there's a purple heart on one side. Which is cool. So if the, if the veteran has multiple, you know, medals, that can be on as well. So I think with something like this, I think council should move forward with it. I mean, some things you guys want to look at though is, you know, what's the term? Like, if someone gets, well, how long is it up for? You know, is that is it a, is it a month? Is it two months? Is it three months? At some point in time, it's going to get damaged, have to be replaced, or right. it's, it's going to serve its useful life. Yeah. Like um, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would be more inclined to keep it up during the spring summer months and take them down during the, the, the winter months when it's going to get ravaged the most. So is this something that's going to come back every year or is it they have to pay it the $45 for every year for it? I would say that these probably could be utilized um, multiple times. Multiple times. As long as you're not well, staying uh, up. We should still have some, uh, you know, we'll use it for a minimum of three years because you know, four or five years down the road. And and we yeah. can develop that and put sure. that on the form. Absolutely. Because we have to also have a cutoff date. So that this is going to have to be in to Studio 10 by a certain date in order to guarantee mm -hmm. that we're going to be able to do this. And I think, again, I spoke with Mr. Kitko and he said there was very few problems in putting these on in the poles. No, you know why not, but like, it, if we have multiple things going on, it's like, but we can skip, I mean, I hate to say it, but because I love our downtown with all the flags, flag, flags on the poles. But is this something that we have to get into? Every other has a pole, has a flag, and then something has a banner. Yeah. Right. But those are all those are all good problems, you know? Those are great issues to have, to think about, work through. Um, but my experience with what we're doing now with the, with, this, with the memory plaques we have on the trees, those things are starting to fade. They do not last. You know, every couple of years we have to go to the CSP and do more amounts of money to get all that stuff replaced. You know, so I'm probably looking at that some way, shape, or form to replace our current plaque program. I've thought about I'm going to do that and present to council. Maybe we get bricks and we get them engraved and put it in the ground. Um, because, like I said, those things fade out. The sun hit them all the time. And some people steal them and they get pulled up. So. We, we see the repetitiveness with how much we got to replace those, so that's why we're saying something like this, and maybe a three-year term we have it, then after three years we're not responsible for it anymore. I mean, the ins and outs of the program, essentially. Uh, council will have to decide what they want, but I, I don't think you can honor people more better so in your town than having their name on a, on a plaque downtown for serving our country, so. Yes, sir. Sound like uh, we just need to do some fine tuning, maybe work out some you know, policy. I'll take care. Know. Maybe we could research what other cities are going to kind of see what the best. Kirsten should be able to give us an idea of yeah. how long they'll last. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're made out of vinyl like we use at the ballpark. Yeah, that's fine. Fine. Yeah, I mean, three three years is about their life expectancy. Yeah. I mean, as long as you don't let them set out. When we, we hang ours up in mid-April and take them down right after the season. And a good sign will last three to four years before it starts to really show some wear and tear. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she can put the air pockets in, too, where the air goes through and mm -hmm. Anything else on this one? City Manager's Report, number nine comments from members of the public. If anyone has any comments, please go to the podium. Sure. And we'll need your name and address for the record, please, sir. Uh, good evening, Dan Martin, 306 South Broadmoor Boulevard over in Springfield. I just want to introduce myself. I, I, I believe I've met uh, a few of you, uh, but uh, I wanted to introduce myself. Uh, I'm a candidate for the uh, Clark County Municipal Court position that uh, Judge Moody vacated, uh, along with two other candidates. And I spent some time on the Springfield City Commission, about 20 years. So I've been in a situation you, you've all been of, of having to uh, look at these different issues and look at budgets and uh, approach uh, the, all the different issues you have to deal with in a, a town. So uh, I've walked in those shoes and I uh, uh, appreciate what you're all doing. And I just wanted to uh, let folks know about what I'm doing and that uh, I want to be able to help the community uh, try to deal with some of the issues we have with, with crime, especially among our young people uh, that come before the municipal court. Uh, we have a lot of 18, 19, 20 year olds that uh, uh, commit these misdemeanors that um, are frequent visitors with the court. And I look at it as really kind of the last good opportunity to maybe turn some of those kids around and get them on the right track before they go down the path of more serious offenses and, and getting into more serious problems. Uh, so I would really like to be able to use the resources uh, of the court to be able to not only uh, you know, punish people when they when they need it, but also to help uh, turn people around and get them going in the right direction. And, and certainly, New Carlisle and uh, all of Clark County, uh, you know, has a, a stake in that. And it is a, a court with countywide jurisdiction. And um, I want to, if I have this opportunity, be able to. Uh, talk with folks in the community, leaders in the community, to try to figure out what we can do uh, to make things better in the justice system and to better serve uh, the public and the people that uh, use those services. Uh, so again, thank, thank you for your service and what you're doing here, and uh, be glad to talk to any of you at any time. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you coming out and visiting. I found a USDA grant for a city community composting. Uh, let me let me stop for a minute, uh, Ms. Newcastle, just for a second. I, I want to see if you got anything else for him. Let's save that one for under other business, so we can keep things in order. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Which because we got to go through the uh, the legislation discussion, then we'll hit the other business. I thought it was related to. <coughs> yes. Thank you. All right, uh, moving on. Committee reports on the line, resolutions, uh, ordinances will be taken care of in regular session. Uh, other business, legislation discussion. Mr. Bridge. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so the legislation that is either introduced tonight or up for action is as follows. Uh, we don't have any resolutions. Uh, so up for vote tonight, it was introduced at the last meeting on 517 as ordinance 2021-13. Uh, that is an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the New Carlisle Public Library regarding the Story Walk program. And what that is, is a, a partnership that uh, myself and council wants to do with the uh, library to install a series of basically um, a story walk along our bike path. And what they'll do is like 26 uh, posts. They'll take a page of the kid's book out, put it in there. Kids walk, they read the story, and they go to the next post. Uh, we also have up for tonight uh, a vote is ordinance 2021-14. That is an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Clark County, Ohio, and the sheriff of Clark County, Ohio, for the incarceration, maintenance, uh, and care of prisoners prosecuted in the New Carlisle Mayor's Court. 
Um, since council uh, will be starting a mayor's court, that is one of the many uh, legislation pieces that we have to pass. Uh, but that is simply establishes an agreement with uh, Clark County to house our prisoners. Uh, we have for introduction only tonight, Ordinance 2021-16. That is an ordinance authorizing the city of New Carlisle, Ohio to lease property owned by the city. Uh, that'll be voted on at the 621 meeting. Uh, we have Ordinance 2021-17. That is also just introduction for tonight that we voted on at the 621 meeting. That is an ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in the New Carlisle City Ordinance 2021-01. Uh, uh, we have uh, an emergency ordinance tonight, that is Ordinance 2021-18E. And what emergency ordinance is, is it allows us to introduce and vote on legislation in the same night, also with an immediate effective date. Uh, that is an ordinance, did I read that? No. An ordinance authorizing city manager enter into a agreement with the Board of Clark County Commissioners for the 2021 roadways resurfacing contract and declaring emergency. So that is that we do uh, about every year with the county. Uh, to resurface some of our roads and what we have on store for this round of funding is Cambridge Court, Sunset, Deerfield, and South Scott from Madison to Lake. Uh, and the last ord ordinance we have tonight is uh, introduction only. That is an ordinance amending chapter 280 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio for the purpose of establishing a mayor's court. Thank you very much, sir. Feel free to take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Council, any discussion on any of these items that Mr. Bridges is looking for? All right, uh, now into other business. Ms. Nowakowski, I'll let you. Um, I, I uh, found a USDA grant for a city community run composting initiative to reduce food waste and provide soil for gardens. And um, it's a minimum, it's a huge grant. I think it's a minimum of um, 45,000, maximum of 95,000. There is some money that will be required from the city, but I haven't been able to get to that yet because you have to get into the application to see what that is. But, I would like to know if there is interest in council, from council for me to continue investigating this. Now, that, would this be mainly used for the community garden up on? Um, no, it could be made. Could be well, I mean, made available to anybody in town. Yeah. And um, I mean, I found some. Have you had any locations in ideal to, to, to put this? Well, I was looking today and I found some small, they'll hold a cubic yard of compost, mm -hmm. uh, which is, by the way, one ton of compost. And we could put these in neighborhoods and people could put their stuff into that and then it could be taken out and used in the community right there or it could be given to gardens el elsewhere whatever um, but the, the idea is to get people to think about how they're getting rid of their waste because food wastes in particular that go into landfills are an issue because they don't decompose in the proper way and they create methane which is part of the problem that we're My only concern with something like that, I mean, we already have a dumping problem in New Carlisle. I'm not saying they would, but I think someone might take that as a, an opportunity to throw things that shouldn't be put into a compost, if, if they're left unmonitored or un, unsupervised, um, if we just put them randomly throughout the neighborhood. Um, I mean, they could be put in a centralized location or two. Yeah. I mean, we certainly could do one at, do some at Westlake. So we're talking multiple bins. Yeah, multiple how, bins. How big are, I mean, is it up to us, how it's size? It would depend on how we did it. If we did it in a centralized location, we could have something that was much bigger. Mm. 
or if you wanted to do it in, say, the park or something, they have small ones that are <coughs> this size. Well, do you mind, if you mind, since we're, we got three minutes to go out and we would need a restroom break, can we continue this in the next meeting under other business again? Sure. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, else we can get a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. second. First by Mr. Cobb, second by Mr. Graham. <laughs> I'll just pick it back up. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Yeah. Councilman Nowkowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Roadwell? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Graham? Yes. Welcome to adjourn except the seven minutes. See you in two minutes. <laughs>